<laughs> Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another discussion for the Naruto series. And I just want to go ahead and say right now, right? Like we're going to be talking about something that is something that could be controversial, which is my guy really needed to die when he fought against Madara. And I just want to say for a series like Naruto that has in just about every arc, in particular in the first portion of the series, just about every arc had those moments where you looked at the characters and there was a real sense of danger. Danger. It really felt like anybody could die, whether it be in the Land of Waves arc where every member from Kakashi all the way down to Sakura, there were moments where at least one time you thought, okay, this character could be done in. They might not make it out of this. All the way down to the Sasuke Retrieval arc that takes place around, I believe, volume 1920, somewhere around there. You have the situations where in that arc, each member of the Sasuke Retrieval team has a moment where you think they legitimately might die. A really great example of this would be Kiba, Choji, and Aneji, each of them had their life or death situations. And so when you look at what goes on with Might Guy versus Madara, this is one of those times where Masashi Kishimoto needed to pull the rug out beneath fans. <laughs> And I'm giving you guys a unique perspective from this because I was somebody that read the Naruto manga for many years before it ended in 2014. <laughs> And one thing that was a constant topic of debate was what is the eighth gate? Are we actually going to see it? And in the war arc, Masashi Kishimoto teased it two times before we actually saw it. There was a moment where when all the Biju, they were getting ready to fire all their Biju Dama at Kakashi and at Mike Guy before Naruto unlocks his KCM2. And there's a moment where Mike Guy says like, no Kakashi, I'll go into the eighth gate and I'll handle this. Everyone got super excited thinking this might be the eighth gate. We might actually see it. And for Masashi Kishimoto, that was not the moment he wanted to reveal it. He saved it for Madara Chia, someone who at that time, Madara, legitimately from fall 2011 all the way up to the early portions, maybe mid-summer of 2014, there were moments where people said, this guy is unstoppable. How the hell is he going to be taken down? And for you to get this sequence where Mike Guy, who was already exhausted, to sit there, get off a of Rock Lee's shoulder and walk forward and you get the flashback where you see how Mike Guy's father basically wasn't anything special. He passed on his will, his ninja way, and he uses the eighth gate to sacrifice himself to protect Mike Guy and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Genma as well. And you get this moment where he takes on the seven legendary ninja from the Hidden Mist Village to make up the seven legendary swordsmen of the mist and you find out that this guy killed off quite a few of those shinobi. And so when you get this scene where Mike Guy is walking towards Madara, somebody who was a walking, overwhelming force of nature, somebody who looked at the five Kage, the five Kage who were supposed to be the strongest shinobi in each of their respective nations. Obviously, Naruto is a bit of an outlier, but this is the thing. Madara made light work of them. Every step of the way, this ghost, this relic from the past, Madara, was trampling all over this belief that existed all throughout the Naruto franchise which is the next generation shall surpass the one before them. That was the constant theme going all the way back to part one. Madara Uchiha basically stepped up and said, excuse me, bitches, that's not what's about to go on here. And when you get this moment where Madara not only is demolishing everybody as an Edo Tensei, but then he finds a way to get himself brought back to life. He then gets even more powerful by absorbing Hashirama Sage Mode. And then he gets a hold of both of the Renegon after absorbing the God Tree into his being, you see Madara as a Ten Tails Jinchuriki just trampling over everybody. And so the real thing that's really important about this is that the stage was set. Mike Guy was being given the perfect opportunity to use the eighth gate. Leading up to this moment, there were all these wild theories. People are saying, people are legitimately saying that Ten Ten was going to use the sealing weapons of the Sage of Six Pass to defeat Madara. But the other thing, the other thing is, is people are saying Naruto's down for the count, Sasuke's down for the count. You have to have Mike Guy going to the eighth gate. And people always went back to what happened when Naruto unlocked his KCM2, which was Mike Guy did not use the eighth gate against all those Biju. That was a super hype moment. We didn't see it. This is the best opportunity because he didn't even think to use it against Obito when Obito became the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. None of that happened, but yet we have Madara Uchiha, someone who's even more powerful 
powerful than he was when he was alive the first time. And so you have this really beautiful speech where Mike Guy is looking at Rock Lee and he's saying like, look, man, I want you to become the ninja that I know you can be. And it's time for Konoha's beautiful green beast to shine once again. Madara's hyping everything up saying, you can't defeat me with this blue steam. You need the red steam. Madara's talking about he want all the smoke. And up to this point, it really looked like Mike Guy didn't want no smoke. Mike Guy looked like he had asthma. Everybody's just looking at him saying, Guy, don't do this. Minato saying, think about your father, Guy. Your father would not want you to do something so reckless. Think about your future. Mike Guy, in so many words, is looking at the dead Hokage. And he's basically saying, it's because I am thinking about the future that I'm willing to lay down my life because at a certain point, somebody has to die so they can return to the earth so they can become the nourishment that's needed for the new trees to sprout. That is basically what Mike Guy was saying in this moment. And for him to essentially, after reflecting on his father's noble sacrifice, to come out of that moment where he's got the eight inner gates, Mike Guy at that point, everyone completely freaking lost it. The beautiful thing was, was that up to this point, nobody really pressured Madara as a Jinchuriki. Nobody. And yet in this moment, we see Mike Guy bending time and space with some of his punches. He's getting assistance from Minato, where Minato's using the Flying Thunder God to teleport some of those truth-seeking orbs out of the way. Mike Guy is being supported, which is another theme of the Naruto series, which is that there are just some things you can't do on your own. And everyone is recognizing and acknowledging Mike Guy's sacrifice. They realize that... He he cares so much about the future development of the ninja world that he's willing to lay his life on the line. Maybe he can't defeat Madara, but maybe he can. And so he pushes forward. And for Mike Guy to get in the hardest blow on Madara the entire day to the point where Madara's regeneration is taking quite a bit of time for him to actually be able to recover from the damage Mike Guy does. For all that to be undone by Naruto showing up and Naruto essentially stopping the death of the eighth gate from killing Mike Guy. That kills a lot of the suspense. I understand that the Naruto series is about understanding destiny, accepting it, but changing destiny because things are not written in stone. I understand that perspective. However, at the same time, you cannot hype up something like this for so long and you not actually cash in on it. That is very poor writing in my opinion. That is something that I really strongly believe with every fiber of my being is a moment that I feel ruined the war arc. That's one of the moments I look back to as one of the hypest moments. You see Mike Guy bending time and space. You see the evening elephant. You see so many beautiful things. You see the night guy, but you also throw away all that payoff going all the way back to the first part of Naruto where it stated that the sacrifice for using the eighth gate is so great that it gives away your life and yet the power is that that surpasses even the five Kage. For that to be kind of washed away like that, I feel like especially during a war where the stakes are at the high where nobody of real significance I'm sorry Neji fans nobody of real significance died okay. Neji had next to no screen time leading up to his actual death Neji had not been relevant in the series until you go back to the Kaze Kage rescue arc and yet Mike Guy had been relevant for a significant portion of the series he was recently fighting alongside Naruto and Kakashi and Killer B so to have a character like this be willing to give up his life for the next generation and to teach to pass down to his student Rock Lee the same message that his father passed down to him and to do so in front of the fourth Hokage to do so in front of his rival Kakashi to be able to do something like that that was the ultimate payoff for Mike Guy however I want to know from you guys do you guys agree with me that Mike Guy should have died do you think that that would have been a poetic death do you think that that would have added the best stakes to the war arc let me know down in the comment section below but as always guys like anything I had to say don't forget to comment rate subscribe and share thank you so much for watching until the end have an awesome day guys